Perhaps one of the most interesting complaints about the new Surface Pro 6 and even Surface Go is the fact it doesn't support Windows 10 on ARM. Instead, they're old school Intel processors. But that's kind of okay as Samsung is stepping in with a Galaxy Book 2. And to be honest, it's basically the Surface Pro, but running a Snapdragon 850. Today, I'll tell you whether or not it's worth it or not. Stay tuned. All right, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about Windows 10 and ARM. It's one of my favorite topics, and the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 is the first to hit the market with the Snapdragon 850, and that's pretty significant because I'm going to just call it now. The Snapdragon 850 is going to be the transition chip. This is the one that we've been waiting for. It's not the most powerful out there. If you're still running a Core i7, obviously that will beat it, but this is the chip where if you were to use it, I put it in front of you and didn't tell you it was a Snapdragon, you probably think it was just a regular Intel processor. It's getting that good. Now, it won't be for everybody, but like I said, this is the transition chip. This is the one that actually feels most like an Intel processor. Now, this device is positioned for basically mobile people, people who are working in enterprise, business, first-line workers, also millennials, and the whole nomadic experience of taking a device with you wherever you work. Also, the gig economy. I could throw out some other terms here if you want that are kind of you know popular out there in a mass culture, but you get the idea. This is for the people who want no compromises and want to take a device with them. Samsung believes the time is right now, especially with LTE prices falling and all the available options here with carriers. Don't forget this launches here in the United States on AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint in November, and that carrier package is going to be a big deal. But before we get any further, let's give you a quick tour of the hardware and show you what you're getting. Taking a look at the design of the Galaxy Book 2, and it is a premium build and experience. You're talking a all-metal chassis here. I really like this modern design. It has curved edges, but then they slice it on the sides, which gives you a nice flat look, and it's just very comfortable to hold, and it looks great too. Coming around to the right-hand side, we have two USB Type-C ports. One of those is a 3.14 data, the other for power and charging. This is the first time we're actually seeing two Type-C ports on a Snapdragon device for Windows, and it's really nice to have. Obviously, you can use one for charging, and you can use the other one for your peripherals. Works pretty well. No Thunderbolt 3. Remember, that's an Intel technology that won't work yet with Snapdragon, so you just have to make do with a 3.14 data. Turning over here, you do have the speaker, and it's a cool little notch. These are AKG tuned speakers. Samsung has a long partnership with that company. And actually, they're very good speakers. They're not quite front-facing, which I would have preferred, but they're still positioned very well, and they sound excellent. Turn to the left hand side, you have the other speaker, and you also have the SIM slot along with a micro SD card. Now, I should point out this is not an eSIM device. We'll talk a little bit about that later as to why that is, but this is just a standard SIM that you'd get from your mobile carrier. So, no eSIM ability, but you do get expansion there if you need it. One of the things I want to point out that Samsung did, they made a cool notch here for the kickstand. makes it really easy to find and basically flick out with your finger. It's a really nice design, something that's a little bit more pronounced than the Surface one, and it actually works very well here. All right, looking at the top of the device for the rear, you do have a fingerprint reader on the back here. Now, that's pretty weird. Uh, I asked Samsung about that. Why they didn't do Windows Hello for infrared? And they said, well, they were concerned about orientation and how you would hold this device and use it. They also polled their customers and basically found that the fingerprint reader was pretty good. So uh, it's an okay design. I don't mind it. I still think a Windows Hello camera would have been better, but uh, I don't really have too many complaints. You also have a rear 8 megapixel camera here. It's a pretty good one as well. It is Samsung technology after all, and they do make uh, pretty good cameras. You can also see the antenna lines here built into the chassis. You do need to have a separate material from metal to allow that Wi-Fi and LTE to work, and so that's why there is a color distinction here. All right, let's talk a little bit about this kickstand. So this is a huge change, actually, for Samsung, who traditionally had the origami sort of design for the previous Galaxy Book. It was a leather folia that sort of you would have to configure. And they switch it out for what is essentially the Surface Pro 4, Surface Pro 5, and Surface Pro 6 kickstand. Uh, it's very similar. It, it does have a little bit of a, a flex here that I don't really care for, but it's, overall it's pretty sturdy. But it does go the full way, so you can, just like the Surface, you can put it into any position. It's very easy. It, it works well. It's a little thinner than I would like, but I really don't have any complaints. It did a really good job here. And compared to the origami version, which was just terrible if you want to use it in your lap, this is just such an improvement. I'm glad that companies are finally just caving into the fact that the Surface Pro is designed as probably the most ideal one, and that's what Samsung did here, and it's better off for it. Now, looking at the top of the device, nothing new or unique here. We do have a power button and a volume rocker, as well as two microphone holes. 
Turn to the front of the device, you do have a 12.3 inch Super AMOLED display. This is full HD plus, also known as 2160 by 1440. So not quite as high as a Surface Pro, but this is higher than what we've seen so far for Windows 10 on ARM devices. Obviously, it's a very good display. Super AMOLED is really awesome, better than LCD. Your blacks are true black here, which is why I chose this background, so the colors really pop. Now, I haven't been able to actually measure the brightness and accuracy of this display yet because it's actually kind of hard to get a colorimeter to work with it, so I'll try to follow up later with that, I'm having a little bit issue there, but it's a very bright display. I read out many complaints. It does auto adjust for brightness too. That is off by default, but you can turn it on, and it actually is a little aggressive, but it does definitely save on battery life. Don't forget, this will be the biggest drain on this device is this display. So you probably want to be a little conservative on brightness. You also on top here have a five megapixel front facing camera. It's a very good camera. It does very well in low light, which is what you'd want for conference calls. No complaints there. Very good design. I should also point out the bezels. They're not the thinnest in the world. They're also a little bit thicker than some people like, but don't forget this is supposed to be held as a tablet. And a lot of companies still believe in this idea that it should be basically as wide as your thumb. You may disagree with that. Uh, at least with the AMOLED display, it blends in pretty well. I should finally mention that that is a three by two aspect ratio. That's the same as Surface Pro. I'm a huge fan of that one and I'm glad to see Samsung using it here. Okay, taking a look at the keyboard. Pretty nice design here. It's a little, it looks like plastic. It is plastic and you know, it feels like plastic. So you don't get the Alcantara that Surface Pro uses. Uh, it looks a little cheap in my opinion, but it doesn't feel cheap. It's a very good typing experience, very good key travel here. They are backlit, so you do get to control that and they auto adjust and all that. There is actually a little power sensor over here that helps do that through the pogo pins. It does get a little bit warm here. I asked Samsung about it. They said it's normal, but you may feel a little bit of warmth there. Uh, and that's just a side effect of the backlighting for the keyboard. You do have a precision trackpad, um, a little bit more narrow than I would like. I'd prefer to a little taller, but obviously you can see there's not a lot of room here. Still, it's a very good trackpad, really had no issue with it. Precision drivers, can't ask for more than that. Very good typing experience. Again, very similar to Surface, so it does have magnets, so we can lay it flat or stick it up to the display. Again, I think this is the ideal form factor design here, so I'm really glad Samsung decided to make those choices. Let's talk a little bit about this pen, the Samsung S Pen. So this is Samsung's proprietary technology included in the box, comes with this kind of weird holster. And the reason for this, I think, is just so you can put it on the counter like this and it won't roll away. It doesn't really do anything else. It does fit in there nicely though, and it doesn't fall out, which is really cool. It's also just a way to transport the pen. Now it is magnetic and sticks to the side here. It's not the world's strongest magnet. And I kind of complained a little bit about that to Samsung. They told me though, they don't really expect people to put this on the device and transport it like that. It's more or less, if you're at a meeting, you just want some place to put the pen, you can put it there. So not very strong magnets, but I mean, it gets the job done. Now, if you use the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 or Note 8, this is a pretty familiar experience. I'm actually glad to see it. If you hold the pen over to the display and you tap the button, you get this little pop-up, which is really nice. This is exactly what's on the Note 9. You can create a note, view all notes, smart select, screen write, and show window. Really neat port that Samsung has done from its phone experience over to Windows 10 PCs. In terms of using the pen, Samsung has gotten a lot of accolades for how accurate and smooth the pen experience is on their devices. And that is definitely the case here. I really enjoy using this pen. Uh, it's just one of the best out there. It's very smooth to use, picks up very well. Now, if you're curious, I'm using an app here called Scribble. It's actually a third-party app, but it's just one of my favorites on the store right now. But in terms of just drawing, taking notes, one of the best pens, and yeah, I mean that in comparison even to the Surface Pro's pen. I think this is actually almost a better experience. Very good palm rejection on here. Really no complaints at all about it. If you're looking for a really good device for taking notes on, for even drawing, well, I think Samsung did a very good job here with its S Pen. All right, let's talk about performance, as I'm sure most of you are really curious about that. And it's a little hard to discuss. Obviously, we're talking about different architectures here for processors. And it's different ways of looking at it and even measuring it. So we're going to use Geekbench, which is one of the ways we can do it. Geekbench 4.0, actually 4.03 does support ARM processors and measuring, so that's what we'll use here. Now, in terms of running actual ARM apps on this, that is the entire operating system, Microsoft Office, Edge, all the inbox apps like mail and news and weather, 
stuff you download from the store. This actually does very well. On single core score, this will beat the current Surface Go. So it's faster than the Pentium processor. But where things get really interesting is in multi-core score. The Pentium is a dual core processor. This has way more cores than that. So you'll get performance here that is similar to an Intel 7th generation Core i5 processor. That's right. So that's really kind of hard to look at when you're measuring things. What does it compare to as far as an Intel chip? Well, like I said, faster than Surface Go, than single core, and as fast as a Core i5 from a couple of years ago. Now where things take a hit is if you're gonna run Win32 apps, that is stuff outside the store. So for instance, you wanna install Chrome. Still, the story here is pretty good, or at least better than what it was with the Snapdragon 835. So for a single core score, you'll get something that's faster than a Surface 3, that is an Atom processor. So not very good experience. But again, the multi-core score is gonna be much better. This is still faster than the Surface Go's multi-core score, even when emulating Win32 apps. And that's actually really important because the overall experience here feels very quick. And I think most people will be okay with it. But yeah, you'll still get a performance hit if you choose to use Chrome over Edge. That's your decision. I still think Edge is worth checking out, especially on this device. But just remember, if you do use something like that, yeah, it'll be a little bit slower, but it's by no means terrible. And it's significantly better than the Snapdragon 835 was. So they have done a lot of performance improvements here. All right, let's talk about battery life here. So Samsung is coding 20 hours, which is obviously a little unrealistic. That's a video loop test, whereas real world is around 12 to 14 hours. That may seem disappointing to you, but in a device this thin and light, 2.4 pounds, just over one kilogram. I'm actually very happy with that. Don't forget this has LTE on board. So it's actually now running a better screen than we saw in the previous generation. So Super AMOLED does require a little bit more power here. But overall, it's a very good battery experience. You can tweak that a little bit if you turn down the display, which is gonna be the biggest drain here. But overall, a very good battery experience. It is still about four to five hours more than what you get out of a Surface Pro. So that's actually a pretty big improvement over what Intel is offering these days. Okay, let's bring it all in. So obviously I'm a huge fan of Windows 10 on ARM. I'm, I'm just a big believer in this form factor, this design and this technology. I think it's getting better and better. The Snapdragon 850 is exactly what I expect it to be. It's significantly improved over the 835. I think most of you, if you were to use this device, wouldn't be able to tell it's running a Snapdragon. It's just that good. There are still obviously some compromises. Now let's talk about the price here, $999 for this. You're going to get the whole device, the keyboard, the smart pen, and the rapid charger, which is the same charger you would use on a Samsung Galaxy phone, which is really convenient to use. That whole Type-C fast charge is really cool. Now I talked to Samsung about this price. They needed a lot of market research on the previous device, what people were willing to pay, and they said that this is what they came up with. I think some people are going to regard it as too expensive, but then again, the people who are going to go for this device, I don't think will mind paying for it. It does offer a lot of functionality. I've been using the Surface Pro 6 extensively lately, and compared to this device, these are very similar. This really does feel like a Surface Pro 6 just running Windows 10 on ARM and using a Samsung S Pen. It's just the form factor is the same, the kickstand is very same, the typing experience is the same. Obviously, the Alcantara and the feel of the Surface Pro is a little bit better and higher quality, in my opinion, but Samsung did a very good job here, mostly because they kind of towed the line on the design here and didn't try to think outside the box too much. That makes it a little bit of a boring device in some sense, too, but if you just want something that works well, gets you really good battery life, and like I said, it gets you about one and a half times more than what you get on a similar Intel system, well, this is going to be your device. In fact, I'm going to be using this device later today on a small trip while I'll be on the train and need LTE. So it's a really cool experience for those of you who can afford it. It's still too early probably for some of you, but Snapdragon 850 is a huge step in the right direction. I'm really glad to see Samsung release this device. There's some other bits here you should be aware of. For instance, this will be sold through AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint starting on AT&T November 2nd. The other carriers a little bit later in November. Uh, it's not really SIM locked, although it kind of is. They did tune it for U.S. carriers, so it's not quite a global device. I'm not sure what's going to go on with global for Samsung. They haven't been really talking about too much here. I did throw an AT&T card in this. I did throw a Verizon card in this. It worked totally fine. No compromises there. Now, I did ask why there's no eSIM on this device, and there's some controversy going on here. If you don't know, U.S. carriers are a little reluctant to support eSIM because it gives you the freedom and choice to do whatever you want. And I think Samsung is playing ball here with the carriers. The trade-off for Samsung is this will be sold on shelves at those carriers and on their website, so they get a really unique presence versus just buying direct from Samsung or Microsoft, which is how the previous Snapdragon devices mostly worked. So in trade of eSIM, you do get a more visual presence for this device in U.S. markets, which I think is actually pretty important. 
But if you're looking for that device that will run globally and run with eSIM, well, this is not quite it. We'll have to see what Samsung does later on. I think they do want to support it, but they also wanted to get this device out into the market as much as possible. Overall, though, I've been very impressed with the Samsung Galaxy Book 2. It's exactly what I expected. And if you really like this form factor and want LTE everywhere, as well as the instant on abilities of this device, well, you should definitely check it out. All right, there are some quick thoughts on the new Samsung Galaxy Book 2. It goes on sale in the United States in November on at and and various carriers. Now, if you want more information about this device, make sure you go to the description below as we'll have links for it. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.